understand this, right? Proverbs 27, 19 says, As water <clears throat> reflects a man's face, so his life reflects the posture of his heart. Right? I'm going to say this again. Many of you that never come to the service on Wednesday, I'm actually just uh, continuing uh, some of the content that the Lord put into my heart from the Wednesday service and I'm carrying it into the service. Let me say that again. As, as water reflects on a man's face, so his life reflects the posture of his heart. Hallelujah. I want to talk today about matters of the heart. Hallelujah. Matters of the heart. Now, I'm going to be concluding this three-part series because this week is the end of our consecration. Remember, I told you 21 days, we're taking the first seven days and we are crying out unto the Lord to be set apart, to be sanctified, to make sure that our heart is not defiled. And, but after the seven days, that's when we'll be hitting the other areas of our lives. That's when we will be crying for, for breakthrough and advancement. That's when we'll be laboring, you know, for our homes, our families and our marriages. So today is is actually seven days where we are completing our seven days of consecration. Seven days of where we ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. Seven days of where we asked really for the Holy Spirit to put a magnifying glass on, on those things that have contaminated our spirit. Amen? So I want to conclude. Remember, I preached three messages. One was the fear of God. One was the hunger of God. And today we're going to be talking about matters of the heart. Amen? How many of you all know it? How many of you all know it will be the greatest injustice to start the new year with 21 days of fasting and prayer? But if this heart is not transformed by the glory of God, amen? It will be the greatest injustice for us to fast and call down and pray for everything else. But if there is not godly evidence of godly sorrow and transformation and repentance in this heart, where we can see, the Bible says, and Lord, create within me a clean heart and renew within me a righteous spirit. Amen? So after this, I will give you all a break. Next week, I'll come back with the good stuff, with some sugary stuff. But today is the last message. Amen? So maybe just, I don't know if I should tell you to put your, your non-offense cap on today too. See, some of you are already getting very, very worried there. <laughs> Amen? Matters of the heart, church. It's important to talk about the matters of the heart. There is one thing that David says about this, and, and, and I love this scripture. He says, as water reflects a man's face, so does his life reflect one's heart. Amen? There is one thing that you cannot hide, church. There is one thing that you cannot hide, and that is the color, and that is the texture of your heart. You cannot hide it. David says, one way or another, one way or another, your heart, will make your life smell like the sweetest aroma. Or your heart will either prove to you how far it is from being galvanized by the sanctifying presence of God. Can I get an amen? One way or another church, no matter how you talk, no matter where you walk, no matter how you conduct yourself, the, the decisions that you make, your character that begins to ooze out, the Bible says it will, it will literally expose the texture and the quality and the fragrance of your heart. Amen? What is your heart condition today, church? Seven days we have cried. Seven days we have, we have asked God for the glory to fall. But what is the condition of your heart? What is really the condition of your heart, church? Let me tell you something. God is obsessed with knowing the credibility and the credence and the dexterity of your heart. Do you know that? If anything, church, let me tell you something. God could be obsessed about many things. He could be obsessed about your calling. He could be obsessed about your ministry. He could be obsessed about how you, you move from being a baby Christian, how you grow through grace and knowledge and stature, and how you become a, a, a strong oak tree in the kingdom of God. But the one thing that he puts on the hierarchy, that he pays so much attention to, which is literally invested and obsessed about, is the condition of your heart. He's, I mean, he's obsessed so much about the condition of your heart that he says this one very startling thing. He says that, he says, your heart is deceitful above all things. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, thank you, sir, you can, you can bring that for me. Is that for me? Thank you so much. I think I was just overexerting my voice, but thank you so much. If you can just leave that there. The Bible says something very important. He says, because we were born in iniquity, because the Adamic sin shaped us, he says, automatically by divine design and by default, our heart is already deceitful. Amen? Our heart is already deceitful. That's why sometimes I feel so sorry for this young generation that doesn't understand scripture, that doesn't understand the logos and the counsel of God, and they go tell people, man, hey, I love you with all my heart. 
Some of the girls that listen to that to some Romeo and some bachelor, be careful. Because his heart is so deceitful. You don't even know how he's going to break your heart. Come on somebody. Sometimes the only parameters for you to get genuine truth is to stay within the context of the word of God. Come on somebody. Nothing else. The heart is deceitful above everything else, church. Deceitful. Now imagine, church. You know, God paints this picture. He says, out of the abundance of the heart. He, see, he talks, he says, above all, above all, God, God, with diligence and with all strength, guard your heart. He says, but above all, the heart is deceitful. Why is God so focused and obsessed with your heart? Because he's trying to purge the deceitfulness out of your heart. He's trying to, to, to literally take your inner garments and take it through the laundry mat of heaven that it's washed. Because until your heart is transformed and the deceitfulness is getting out of your heart, there's no way that you can have the full measure of communion with God. Come on, somebody. There's no way for you to have the full deposit of the glory of God. There's no way that you will ever be able to grow in stature and glory and favor of God to understand the mysteries of heaven if your heart is still deceitful. Amen? Do you know, church, how deceitful your heart really is? And God says that he's obsessed with trying to purge our heart and get everything that is out that is defiling it. Imagine a computer church. Imagine a computer. Because really your heart is like, is like a, a, a CPU, like a central processing unit. Or it's like a hard drive. You know, when, when the Bible says, and protect your heart. Your heart is like that hard drive. Imagine if you had a computer. I don't know if you know what a, a Trojan horse is. A Trojan horse is, is one of the highest level of viruses that affects application software. And if you do not have an antivirus, if you do not format that hard drive in time, that, 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 that Trojan horse virus is not just going to shut down application software, it will give you a blue screen and shut down your entire CPU. Can I get an amen? And that's what happens, church, with the heart. If we do not, def if we do not make sure that we cleanse the heart and we get all the deceitfulness out of it, the Bible says that your heart can be get so corrupt that the Lord will never be able to work with you. You'll never be able to become sensitized. You'll never have spiritual senses that can discern the things of God. Your heart will never be able to be a heart that God can work with. Amen? What is the condition of your heart? Do you have a deceitful heart? Do you think that you have a pure heart? Your heart is the central system that deals with your emotions, your desires. The word heart, there's a Greek word for it that is called thesaurus. When we talk about the heart, now remember we're not talking about the, the, the cardiac heart. Here when we talk about the reference of the heart, the word heart in, in the Greek word means thesaurus, which means the bedrock and the affections of your soul. So when we talk about the heart in this context, we're talking about your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen? Your heart is the central system that deals with your emotions, your desires, your will, your mindset. So if your hard drive is corrupted, how can God ever get inside your heart to establish the kingdom inside it? Hello, somebody? You know, everybody says, hey, I, I want to go establish the kingdom. I want to do mighty things. I want to do great exploits, man. I want to go lay hands. I want to preach the gospel. But you will never get no power. You will never get no dunamis. Your ears will be deaf to the sound of the sovereign voice of God if this heart is not right. Amen? The Bible says, Solomon wrote this. He says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Imagine Solomon, the greatest man that lived. They call him the this, this sage of wisdom. He, he wrote the song of Solomon. He wrote the book of Proverbs. He wrote Ecclesiastes, which talks about Esther already and talks about the times and the seasons. But here Solomon writes something and I love this. He says, above everything I wrote, he says, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. Out of it flows the wellspring of life. Hallelujah. It's the wellspring of life. Jesus said this. He said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. I'm going to say that again. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Only a pure heart, church, listen to this, will have access to the revelation and the understanding of the personhood of Jesus. Can I get an amen? Some of the best secrets of heaven, church are kept away from you, not because you don't pray hard enough, not because you don't speak in tongues every day, not because you don't fast and pray. Some of the best secrets from heaven are kept away from you because we don't have a pure, clean heart. 
The Bible says only the pure in heart shall see God. When it talks about seeing, it's talking about vision. It's talking about understanding. It's talking about revelation, knowledge, church. The, let me tell you something, church. The fundamentals of ministry for you to connect with heaven is not your gifts. It's not your grace. It's not your oil. It's a pure heart before the Lord. That is the foundation of ministry. Amen. Do you have a pure heart? Do you have a defiled heart? Is the deceitfulness still inside of you? Amen. The Bible says, church, that, you know, the Bible says this and he says, he says, the hardened heart is so dangerous. A reprobate mind shuts off the connection of how the spirit man begins to receive from heaven. That's what the Bible says. You know, church, many times I see some people come into the house of God and some of them got this watches where it's very, very loose, you know, and they all, re- 10 times in the service, I know what they're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. Hey, pastor, hurry up, man. Hey, make fast. I need to get out of this church. Can I tell you something, church? Those people that dangle all their watches and then fidget with things in their purses and check on their phone and don't want to listen to the revelation and, and the rich word and the logos that is coming from the pulpit, it tells me you've got a hardened heart. Because you know why? The heart and heart will blind the soul to receive the word. There will be no hunger. You see, David had to deal with this. That's why David, no matter what he did, he always came and he cried. And he tore his clothes in sackcloth and ashes. And he said, Lord, this one thing that I ask, this one thing create within me a clean heart and renew within me a righteous spirit. You know why? Because David knew if he did not have a clean heart, His heart would be so hardened, he would never be able to receive the glory. He'll never be able to receive the blessings of heaven. He'll never be able to receive the counsel. He'll never be able to receive the instructions from the third heaven. Amen? Come on, somebody. Many people today that don't want to hear the word of God, it's because your heart is hardened. And you don't want, and your soul is restless on the inside. There's nothing that can penetrate it. An unclean heart will blind the soul from the truth of the gospel. I'm going to say that again. An unclean heart will blind the soul from the truth of the gospel. We can come in church and you don't even know how thirsty you are because your heart is hardened. You can come into the church where there's a, literally a pool of Bethesda and there's a stirring up of the glory. But if your heart is hardened, your soul is going to shut its door to the spirit of revival. Amen. God says, church, he will search every man's heart. Every man. From the pulpit to the pew. From the aristocratic to the blue collar. To the rich and to the poor. Watch this. He says, he will search every man's heart to give him the fruit of his deeds. Hey, that's scary, man. That is scary. Your heart can be your biggest blessing. Or it can be the reason why you're not living under an open heaven, but you are living under a brass heaven where every prayer is shut up and you will never see the harvest and the blessings of God. Amen? The purity of your heart is the master key to open doors in heaven, church. Whenever God wants to do business with a man, let me tell you something. Whenever God wants to do business with a man on earth, he always has to deal with the posture of his heart. He doesn't deal with the eloquence. He doesn't deal with the financial. He doesn't deal with the grace. He doesn't deal with the anointing. He doesn't even deal with the hunger of God. Whenever God wants to do business with a man on earth, he has to deal with his heart. He's not dealing with the prestige. He's not dealing with all the fame and all the pomp. He has to deal with the heart posture. That's why the Bible says, Hey, God shouted out from the heavens. He says, Samuel, take that horn and get out of Jesse's house right now. This man may look handsome, he may look tall, he may look dashing, but I don't want that man's heart. There's another man in the shepherd's field. There's another man that is after my own heart. There's another man who doesn't have anything defiled inside of him. That's the man that I want to rule my kingdom. That's the man who I will prosper. That's the man that I will put a crown of pure gold. That's the man that I will take out from the shepherd's field and put him into the palace gates. A man with a pure heart. Do you have a pure heart, church? Because you can fast for seven days and God can say, just like he spoke to the Pharisees, woe unto you, you hypocrites. That's a hard one, eh? I didn't thought I'll have the guts to say that, yeah, but just felt the anointing on that one. Hallelujah. 
In fact, church, watch this. The greatest rebuke to the lawgivers and the Pharisees were Jesus calling them straight out. I love this one. Yeah, Jesus called the Pharisees, you whitewashed tombs. Because they too prayed, they too fasted, they too consecrated themselves. And you think your consecration, you have never even dived into the theology of Jewish consecration, man. Oh, church, let me tell you something. It will put you to shame to see how these people set themselves apart for the glory of God. Just to be called the set apart ones. But you know what Jesus came? He says, listen, he says, all your whitewashed tombs. What a rebuke, man. He called him straight out. He says, you're fasted, man, for so many days. He said, look at y'all. you all got turbans. you will take the stones and your ephod and you'll polish it so much because it must strike on somebody's eyes. He says, you'll recite the Torah like it's milk and honey coming out of your lips. 613 commandments. You know everything of the Torah, everything of the Pentateuch, everything of the Moses law. You know all the canon scriptures. You have all the wealth of the prophets. But let me tell you this one thing, Pharisees. You neglect the weightier things of this kingdom. You know how many times, church, in the church of Jesus Christ, we neglect the weightier things of this kingdom. You know what is the weightier things of this kingdom, church? Is the posture of your heart. Is the fragrance that the Holy Spirit carries inside your spirit, man. Is the texture of who you are on the inner man. And we neglect the weightier things of the kingdom church. Woe unto us. Listen to me. Woe unto us. Woe unto us. I feel like crying on the inside. My spirit man is already crying. If we are sitting under an authentic ministry of the Holy Spirit for so many years. But we never go back home being better image bearers. We never go back home being better uh, priests. We never go back home being better prayer mothers. There's something that the glory and the power of the Holy Spirit must do. And it must change. Change your heart. Amen. Is your heart changing over the last seven days? It is, is it getting more receptive to people? Are you finding a revelation of mercy? Are you guarding your lips and guarding your mouth and turning the other cheek? Are you starting to look at your, your own sins, your own double scarlet sins before you start to judge anybody else? Hello, somebody. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Why, church? Guard your heart with all diligence, with all strength. Guard the church. Listen, because David says something so important. He says, he uses an anthropomorphic term. He says, your heart has eyes. Your heart has, has ears. There's doorways to your soul, church. There's entry points. In fact, some people call it the gateway to your soul, which is your heart. There's two important access points to get into your heart. And this is why, this is why Solomon and David kept on saying, guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart. You know why? Because your ears and your eyes is like the two arteries that get inside your heart. You see, when, when, when Solomon said, like, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life, he was literally looking at your heart, pumping blood to every other organ. And out of the heart, let me tell you something, church, if your heart is pumping contaminated blood, every other organ in your body is going to shut down. So he says, protect the heart. Just let me tell you something. If your eyes and your ears, which is the gateway and the access point and the arteries, the spiritual arteries that it enters into your heart, if it is not cultivated with habits, with healthy habits, you are contaminating and defiling your heart. Amen? And he says, guard it, guard it, guard it. Guard your, guard your eyes to your soul. Guard your ears to your soul. Amen? You know, church, if you ever go to your doctor, the first thing that he will look at you, whenever he wants to examine your heart to see the quality of your heart, you know what he'll do? He'll check your arteries. Hello, somebody? He will do a test and they will see how much, how much blockages is in your arteries and they can tell you the quality of your heart. Hello, somebody? What is the quality of your heart? Do you have some spiritual cholesterol that you need to run it off and get some healthy habits in your heart going? Amen? How do you keep your heart healthy? Ask your neighbor, is your heart healthy? Yeah, you don't want to ask, no? Eh? Some of you are asking, hey, do you have flora over here? How healthy is your heart, church? Watch this. How to keep a healthy heart. Number one, the Bible says, it's not what goes in a man's mouth that defiles him, but it is what comes out of a man's mouth that defiles him. Church, can I tell you something, please? This may be an old school message, but I have to calibrate your hearts before you come into the new year. Please watch your big fat mouth. 
your mouth is either an instrument of grace or your mouth is either a defilement unto your own heart and not anybody else can i get an amen it's easy to spot people church that have a defiled heart because the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak it amen some people hide it very well because when they don't speak it it's still inside there you know that huh? that's why the bible says god your ears and your eyes you know how that thing gets inside your heart is when you open the eyes of your soul and the ears of your soul that's how it gets inside some people pretend very well in the church but some of them can't contain it that 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 evil treasure the bible says just comes out of their mouth it bubbles on the inside amen because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks it's easy church to just check people whose hearts are defiled you know i i can pick them up just like that the spirit of discernment hey is strong upon me man i can just sit with somebody with a dialogue and a conversation i can just hear when that gossip wants to drip out of their lips oh they they try to hold it back but they just have to say it i know sometimes when the slander comes out of their lips i know sometimes what it is oh when they love to be a false witness you know how many false witnesses we got in the church of jesus christ how can a church saved by the blood of jesus who had a second chance a third chance a fourth chance who was wrapped in scarlet purple robes and washed by the blood of jesus how can we ever be a false witness to anybody hello somebody these are this is how you know church when somebody's heart is defiled when you hear the gossip when you hear the slander when you hear the vile and the guile come out of them or also when you hear them also when you hear them being a false witness to another brother church let me tell you something the, the bible says and six things i hate but the seventh thing is an abomination unto the lord which is a false witness unto your brother why because a false witness strips somebody from the from the credibility of who they are and sows discord and division in the brotherhood amen god says the seventh thing a false witness is an abomination unto the lord just let me tell you why we got to be very careful please church please you got to be very careful sometimes people bring news to me i don't want to go to somebody else i just try and i zip my mouth and i keep it into my heart because i don't want to defile my own heart can i tell you something do you know that your heart has a carbon copy I don't know if you know what a carbon copy is. Now they don't have because now they got some new technology. But back in the day you got the carbon copy at the bottom, you got the page at the top. So when they when when they write on the top you 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 got another copy of the invoice at the bottom. Come on somebody. Do you know that your heart has a carbon copy? Do you know that somebody else that comes with a false information when somebody else comes with gossip, when they want to talk about somebody else, they come and they leave one copy. Listen to me. But when they go, what you don't understand, the second copy is already left in your heart. The carbon copy is engrafted it's imprinted already in your heart that's why we judge people without grace because somebody else already left the CV of them inside your heart Come on somebody there's a carbon copy inside your heart be very careful Don't let anything defile your heart church Don't let anything defile your heart not for one day church I want to tell you something today church if you have to walk away from conversations that defile your heart so let it be if you have to block some people from whatsapp so let it be if you have to delete a hundred people off facebook because they're getting into your dms and you don't want to get involved in that defilement block them off Don't let anything defile your heart church. May grace always flow from your mouth church. Use every moment to be a word practitioner to speak life. Come on somebody, every moment I don't care how much that child has fallen. I don't care how much of wretched sin that they are rolling in on the floor. I don't care how much they have been abused and broken and pushed aside. You use the word of God. You lift them up. You let them know they are still the apple of God's eye. You let them know they are still anointed and appointed. You let them know they are still hallelujah part of God's chosen flock. Be a word practitioner church. 
be a word practitioner at all times speak life at all times don't let any opportunity allow any words to come out of your mouth to defile your heart church sometimes i know what it is sometimes i know how your environment and your circumstances can be sometimes church your pockets can be empty you don't know when the next paycheck is going to come i tell you resist the urge to say anything that will defile your heart and your destiny but speak life hallelujah and say hey my god owns a cattle of a thousand hills my juice season is coming and it is coming pressed down shaken together and running over oh lord the sickness is pulling me down to the floor it's affecting my men- mentality and my insanity oh but lord your word says even though my outward body is perishing away my inward man is being renewed day by day you are still the lord that healed thee and i know my healing is coming hallelujah oh church i know sometimes you can't provide for your families oh there's no ravens the brooks are drying up but you rise up as a word practitioner and you speak life and you say hey my appointed time is coming i hear the abundance of rain be a word practitioner church and speak life at all times don't let anything get inside your heart that will defile you don't keep grudges church don't hold vendettas after this fast please let me tell you something you would have wasted all your 21 days if you still got unforgiveness in your heart or imagine sacrificing yourself for 21 days because i know how some people are hard it is for you to stay from the boti from the chicken neck from the prawns from the mutton masala But imagine doing staying away for 21 days starving yourself when you're feeling like you're going to die but all the 21 days would have been for nothing if you still have defilement in your heart don't keep it church get rid of it Get it off it let it go let it go let it go let go of the grudges let go of the vendettas let go of the bitterness let go of the offenses let go of the unforgiveness let go of that poison in your heart let go of it church don't be a critic don't be a complainer don't be a condemner keep your heart pure at all times amen let it go church church i promise you this one thing keep your heart pure and just let it go don't let anything defile you know sometimes it's hard church sometimes keeping a pure heart is hard how many of you know that sometimes wearing this christian garments i got my neighbor on my side deliberately tormenting me like a demon all night he's swearing me f's and b's he's swearing me by my name while i'm preparing my sermon and the lord says you're preparing a sermon about a pure heart don't get up from that bed you stay and maintain and don't let anything defy you know how hard that it is that is very hard when somebody is standing on their balcony and shouting your name your wife's name your mother's name your uncle's name everybody else's name let me tell you something church something keeping this this christian garments and juggling the rod and the staff is very hard it's not easy sometimes wearing the christian garment because you got to keep yourself composed you know why because the bible says that you are a representative of the kingdom everything that comes out of your mouth is not there to represent you but you are representing the king come on somebody sometimes carrying a pure heart church is hard you got to take the trauma you got to take the punches you got to take the betrayal you got to take the pain you got to take the suffering when they hit you on one cheek you got to turn around and say take the other cheek i didn't mean that cheek I mean this chico here. Yeah. Uh sometimes when they say give me your one tunic you got to give everything else one time. Sometimes keeping a good pure Christian heart is not easy church. Come on talk to me. Talk to me somebody. But can I can I remind you this one thing church I promise you there is a God who burns with righteous indignation and he says vengeance is the Lord church you just keep a pure heart you just keep a merry spirit and I'm telling you just like what he told Joseph he says what the enemy meant for your harm I'm turning it around for your good let me tell you something church you know why I like to keep my pure heart because I know God is still in the business of giving me beauty for ashes keep that pure heart church no matter what let them burn hot coals on their head amen there's power in a pure heart church there's power in a pure heart but sometimes it's hard church sometimes it's hard but can i tell you something you know what keeping a pure heart will do to you, you may not see it now but keeping a pure heart is really you it's really you working undercover 
It's really you sowing into your future. Your a pure heart is sowing into your destiny. It's sowing into your tomorrow. You don't know what it is doing, but it is affecting the dynamics of heaven where you are provoking the favor and the reckless grace of God over your life. You may think it's not doing nothing church, but let me tell you something. Angels are saddling their back to get ready with the wheat and the barley and the harvest and the blessing. It's coming church. Your pure heart won't be for nothing, church. That silence and that duct tape you have to put on your lips won't be for nothing. There is a reward that is coming from heaven for every pure heart. Amen? That's why God, the Bible says God blessed Joseph. And he didn't bless his brothers. You know why, church? God will never bless a heart with bitterness and vengeance. The Bible says the reason why he could trust Joseph is because Joseph had a pure heart. But you know what also a pure heart was supposed to produce? You know, a lot of people say I have a pure heart, but they don't have compassion. You can't have a pure heart without compassion, church. It goes hand in hand. It's synonymous in nature. It works together. And that's why, church, that's why God raised Joseph up to such mighty power and moved him up from levels and levels to dimensions. Church, if you do not have a pure heart, you cannot have compassion. And if you do not have compassion, God can never trust you with power in the kingdom. Amen? Because God's idea of power is different. You see, when we look at power in the natural kingdom, we look at taskmasters, we look at pharaohs. But when God gives you power in the kingdom, it's the power to stand right next to the family that scoffed at you and threw you in the pit and rejected your destiny. And it's that power that still looks at them with compassion and says, Hey, I'm exalted. The Lord has still blessed me. Hallelujah. But I'll still have mercy on you. That's a different type of power in the kingdom. Amen? Do you have a pure heart, church? Do you carry the compassion of God? Because without the compassion of God, you will never see the power of your pure heart. God can never trust you in the kingdom of God. Amen? A pure heart without compassion, church. When you have compassion, God will trust you with power. Amen? You know, sometimes church is a hard thing. I mean, if you all have family troubles and family problems and sometimes you just have to keep a pure heart. How much sometimes your best friend who you didn't even thought will turn on you and they drive that steak knife into your back and the Lord says, no, keep your heart clean. Don't let your heart get defiled. Brittle your tongue. Still keep the composure. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. It's hard sometimes to keep a pure heart. But you know what I love? The Bible says in the book of Psalms, it says, Oh, the wicked may plot against the righteous, but the Lord laughs because their days are coming. Can I prophesy over somebody today that every tongue that rose up against you, their day of judgment is coming because your pure heart will attract the hand of God, the host of heaven and the power of the kingdom amen the bible says and may the eyes and the ears of the lord be attracted to those that have a righteous pure heart you may think church you're pure you may think that you're being just dragged in the dirt you may think people are just scoffing at you and spitting on you and trampling on you but let me tell you something church the more they trample the more they scoff the more the lord is exalting you amen Keep a pure heart, church. Keep a pure heart at all times. Keep a pure heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard it from ungodly chatter. Guard it from vile thoughts. Guard it from foreign voices. Not everyone is your friend. Don't allow your heart to be a dumping ground for somebody else's trash. Church, treat this thing as a precious commodity and a jewel. It is not a dustbin, a place for other people to speak all their rotten thoughts and get it dumped into sight in your heart. Can I get an amen? Guard your heart, church. Guard your heart at all times. If only Samson knew how to guard his heart. Man, you know the story with Samson. You see, this is the problem. We don't guard our ears. We don't guard our eyes, which is the windows to our soul and to our heart. We don't guard those, those two arteries that are coming to our heart. Do you know if Samson only guarded his heart, he would still have his anointing? If Samson only guarded the gateways to his soul, he would have still finished his destiny on point. You know, we give Delilah such a bad name. We call her harlot. We call her a prostitute. We say that she promiscuously seduced Samson. Go and read your Bible, please. The only thing that happened was that man fell prey to his weakness. Because you know men got one weakness. You give them flattery and compliments. Ooh, they'll do anything. 
Hello, somebody? The Bible says, and Delilah, all she did was she put his head on a pillow and she gave him compliments. Oh, Samson, so big your muscles are. Oh, Samson, oh, is that organics you used on your hair? And Samson fell and he did not guard the gateways to his heart. And let me tell you something, what is the agenda of the enemy church? The agenda of the enemy is not just to get to your heart. Do you know how the enemy works? First, he will get into your heart and then he will get into your head. Because the Bible says once Samson allowed the voice of Delilah to get into his heart, it stripped the anointing from his head. Come on, somebody. Guard your heart. Guard the gateways of your soul. Guard the arteries that are coming into your, into your heart. Guard the eyes. Guard the, 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 the ears that is coming into your heart. Guard your heart from the fears of this world. Church, let me tell you something. Guard yourself from the noises of Babylon, the reports from Babylon, the media, the TV, the news reports, that report, this report. The Bible says in the last days, many hearts will fail them because of fear. Come on, somebody. Sometimes our hearts are failing us because of fear. Why? Because the petrol price is going up. Then it's coming down. Then it's going up even more. Then the bread price is going down. Then companies are being liquidated. Then we know that there's recession. Then some people are losing their job. There's so much of fear that is striking our heart because we haven't guarded the eyes and the ears of our soul, church. Don't do it, church. Don't let that fear, don't let the father of lies, don't let the sound of Babylon get inside your heart. The only thing that you should let get inside your heart, church, is the sound of the kingdom of heaven. The only thing that you should get inside your heart, church, is the good news from the Father. The only thing that you should let get inside your heart, church, is the counsel and the covenant and the voice of the sovereign God. Hallelujah. Let that get inside your heart. Guard your hearts at all times, church. Guard it from noises. Guard it from the fears of this world. Guard it from the lies of Satan. You know, one thing that we do, and this is why fear creeps into our heart and we lose our balance, and why we get so terrified, is because as soon as we hear the fears of the world, automatically by instinct, we go and look at at, at what's in our hand. Come on, somebody. As soon as we think, hey, the petrol price is going up, hey, policies, hey, everything is going up, the rent is going up, the currency, the first thing that our human intellect will do is to see what measure of the seed we have in your hand. Come on, somebody. But can I tell you something, church? The dynamics of the kingdom works differently. It's not about the size of your seed. It's as long as you have a seed to put into the kingdom. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that here was this woman. She was crying. Oh, Lord, the debtors are coming from the government. They want to take my children for ransom. But I got nothing. I only got this oil. The prophet says, man, bring that oil. And he put the power of God on it. And the Bible says the oil begin to overflow. That she became an oil distributed. Church, let me tell you something. Even if you have a little bit on your hand, but if you got the power of God over it, you have an overflowing harvest coming your way. Guard your ears, church. Guard your eyes. Guard your heart. Don't let the lies and the fears of this world creep inside your heart. Only let the sound and the counsel of an unshakable kingdom enter inside your heart. Guard it at all times, church. Guard it at all times. I'm looking at the time. Amen. And I'm going to be closing with this now. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, 7. Let me have my tea. Let me have my tea. Amen. I love this one. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, chapter 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Can I tell you something, church? You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You cannot fool any medical research. They have advanced so much in technology. They can do one finger prick in your entire body and they can get one small drop and sample of your blood and they can tell you what junk you feed your immune system with. You are what you eat, church. As so is is with your heart. Be careful what you feed your soul Because whatever you feed your soul, that's who you will become, church. You are what you eat. As a man thinketh, so is he. 
Whatever you feed your soul, church, is who you will manifest into. Whatever ungodly thoughts that you allow to get inside your heart through the gateways of your soul is who you will become, church. Can I get an amen? You are what you eat. Be careful for toxic soul foods that can mess your heart up. Hello? The man that keeps sinning is because he keeps feeding himself a carnal diet. He that sows in the flesh reaps from the flesh, but he that sows in the spirit shall reap from the spirit. Amen. You know, Proverbs says something. Let's let's stand, church. Let's stand. Must be getting shocked. Oh, I'm quickly wrapping this up. Let's stand. You are what you eat. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 14. Just put that up for me, Jody. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 14. It says, a wise person is hungry for the knowledge of the word, but the fool feeds on trash. I'm going to say that again. A wise person is hungry for the knowledge of the word, but the fool feeds on trash. Church, get the word in you and throw out the world out of you. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Get the word in you and throw out the world in you. Stop investing your time where there's no productive return. Back it into your soul and nothing is valuable. Church, the Bible says, teach me, O Lord, to number my days. Church, you know what real wisdom is? Don't just number your days. Number your seconds. Number your minutes. uh, Number your hours of everything that gets into the gateway of your soul. That is true wisdom, church. Amen. You are what you eat. You know, there's so much of, there's so much of debauchery on the airwaves. There's so much of debauchery on the media. There's so much of corruption. Every time you switch on the radio, there's something to defile your heart. You know, the other day I, 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 I switched on the radio and I normally have my, my CD in there, my gospel CD with my Maverick and my Hill songs there. But for one odd time, I had 5FM playing. And the worst song that 5FM could be playing is, uh, what was that song? I can't remember now. Hey, I just can't remember. But it was such a song. It was such an insidious song when it talks about, oh, but your mind is corrupted. Your mind is this. Your mind is that. And it tells, it, 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 the lyrics in the song were so dangerous, it was telling you to give up in your mind. How dangerous is that church? That's what the enemy wants because he knows the warfare and the battle is in your mind. Come on somebody. The Bible says church stand strong in your mind. The Bible says don't let your mind be moved. Don't let it be unshakable. Come on let it be immovable abounding in all things because when you serve God you serve him with the mind of Christ. Amen. Be careful church for just putting on the the radio station. Be careful for just putting on whatever tunes you are listening into your cars, radios. Because let me tell you something, that is programming the gateways and the eyes to your soul. And it is causing your heart to get defiled. One time I was, when we were escorting my wife, we went and saw a movie. And we didn't see the level of profanity in that movie. We didn't check it out. You know, normally you have the age restriction and so on and so on. And we sat in the cinema and we listened to everything that came out, not even about 10 minutes when the movie started. It was just a whole lot of things that was being defiled from this movie. Profanity after profanity after profanity. We literally just woke up from the cinema. I got up and I woke up and somebody made a comment and said, Oh, but you paid money for this movie. How can you just leave the cinema? I didn't answer him, but when I went back out, you know what I thought about it? Yes, we paid money for that movie. Yes, it was a valuable amount of money. But can I tell you something else, church? There is nothing more valuable than what gets inside your heart your temple, your mind, and your conscience. Because that's what will determine the capacity of the glory and the anointing that will get inside of you. At all costs, church. At all costs, protect this temple, protect this heart, and don't let nothing defile it. Amen? What is the condition of your heart, I may ask? What is the condition? Psalms chapter 19 verse 37 says, Turn my eyes from worthless things and preserve my life with the word. Amen. Church, that should be your prayer. Every time you turn on the internet, every time you switch on Netflix, every time you pick up your phone and you say, I'm going to watch one video on Facebook, but after one video, it goes to TikTok. Then it goes to another video. Before you know it, you're sitting there for one hour feeding yourself with junk. Come on, somebody. See the young people acting like y'all don't do that. Y'all just wanted to watch that one video, but then the one video went to another video, they went to another video, and you don't know you have been defiling your heart. Amen. 
church the internet is so dangerous can i tell you something the internet has given your children a character and an identity more than you were supposed to with the word of god come on somebody i know you know i listen to the jargon of our christian children today kingdom children who were supposed to be nurtured with the word of god the only thing they know is marvel this avengers that ask them who's the major prophets and who's the martyrs in the bible they make huh what's that can i get an amen guard your heart with all diligence guard your heart with all strength guard your heart with all vigilance don't let nothing contaminate and defile this heart i love church you know the bible says that the bible talks about the eagle you know what i love church about the eagle it says that if 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 you did your research only eagles that are bred in captivity eat dead food but the eagles that are not bred in captivity that soar 5000 meters in high altitude no eagle ever eats dead food can i tell you something church don't need any dead things on the floor that will defile your spirit man don't let any dead things get inside your conscience because you're an eagle you are destined for high altitudes you are destined for greatness but don't eat the dead stuff on the floor don't let your heart get contaminated amen hallelujah what is the condition of your heart today church what is the condition amen don't eat dead things from this world don't eat toxic soul food be intentional because what you eat is who you will become be intentional from today church 7 days has passed don't go back don't read dig the grave whatever you have buried in the last 7 days make sure that coffin is sealed hallelujah guard your heart from all things you are what you eat be intentional about what you eat church and make sure that nothing that comes out of your mouth begins to defile your heart amen what is the condition of your heart church i pray today church that this fasting will not be a religious fast i pray when we go back home there'll be repentance i pray when we go back home fathers will bow down on their knees and have an altar call with their children I pray there will be reconciliation. I pray somebody will phone somebody up and say, "You know what? Over this last 7 days after this 21 days, the spirit of the Lord convicted me and broke me down and told me, I have to call you my brother. I have to call you my sister because the Holy Spirit is turning on the inside and I never want to defile my heart." Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit. Oh Lord, take not thine holy 